Welcome to Amy Horn Photography. Today's lesson is product photography. So our goal today is to capture an image of a product with a white backdrop. This is commonly used in industry for creating cutouts for advertisements and it's really simple to do and I'm going to show you today with just one off-camera flash and some foam board. And then I'll show you a few other varieties as well if you want to get more gear. So my product photography setup is as follows. I've got my product, I've got my foam background, and I've got to have my off-camera flash. Since I have a transmitter for the off-camera flash, it's much easier to work with because I can change the settings on the camera and it will affect the flash output. Whenever I shoot with flash, I always use manual exposure. And for this particular setup, I've started off with 5.6 as an aperture and 1 60th of a second. Anything under 1 60th of a second, since I'm handheld, I risk camera shake. So I've just started off with my flash power at 1 32nd power. And let's give it a try. The image is not going to include the foam background. It will just include this part of the frame here. And let's make sure the flash goes off. There we go. So at 1 32nd power, I'm going to check my histogram. And it turns out I have a pretty good exposure. I've got a little bit of clipping in the background, which is okay because I do want to cut out. I don't want many shadows. So I can zoom in on my photo as well and just double check focus but otherwise I think I, I have it. If I needed to, I could adjust flash power or I can re, redo composition just a little bit. And by sliding the focusing rail closer to me, I can get a better angle now. Let's take a look at another option for great product photography, and that would be using a tent diffuser. So these can be purchased online. They're very simple to assemble, as you see, and they're just like your little car shade, window shade. Uh, they come with different colored backgrounds, and they come in different sizes. Uh, they work really nice, both indoors and outdoors, but if you use them outdoors, you wanna clamp them to a table. Otherwise, you might notice they'll fly away like a kite. Uh, but you can see in full day, full sun in the middle of the day, what great light this would provide because it's really nice, soft, diffused light. Today, we're going to use it indoors and just give um, our product photography a different twist and see how the difference is in this image. So I'm going to set the product into the tent. And I still have my flash set up and my camera settings the same as they were before. So this time, I'm just going to hold the flash up above and let the light dif um, diffuse down in. My camera settings have not changed from before. They are still at um, 5.6, 1 25th, and I'm at 1 32nd power. So uh, as I look at my histogram, it actually seems right on. I've got some blinkies, but not too many. So I have great brightness in the whites, but I'm not I don't have too many shadows, so I'm pretty much good to go. But if I needed to make an adjustment, I could always change the power of the flash just by getting closer or further. I can also change the power of the flash on the flash itself. So I have many options when it comes to using a setup like this as well. And like I said, they come in multiple different sizes and um, great to use. They, they fold up very nice and small, so they're good for travel as well. So now that you've tried product photography with a small subject, what happens if you have a larger subject like a vase right here? If I wanna take the picture with a clear white background, I don't want the seams of where the foam board uh, connects. So I need to look at some kind of seamless option. You can consider uh, any kind of cloth or poster board and make a little bit of a sweep, okay? So let's take a look at that. So here I've created a seamless option. I have used a sheet. The sheet is just on top of a folding chair. So I could have tacked it to a wall. I could have used background stands. Um, 
light stands with a pole across it. There's so many different ways. Just get kind of clever with what you have around your house. And, but you want to kind of make it a nice sweep. <clears throat> I did, this sheet has been in a, a closet and in a drawer for quite some time, so it's a little bit wrinkled. So I did um, fluff it, I got it wet, put it in the dryer for a little bit. Ideally, I could have ironed it too. That would have given me even a smoother surface. But from past experience, I know if I have a little bit of wrinkles, I can probably overpower those with the flash since I'm really pointing the flash straight to the background. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my subject towards the front of the chair, making sure as I look at it, I'll be able to frame with a complete white background and not, um, not get anything else in it. Because the whole goal of this assignment is about lighting and not about using Photoshop to fix and correct and do all of that. So I'm going to start with my traditional camera settings. I'm on manual exposure, a 60th of a second, um, and f5.6. I might open the aperture a little bit more just to get a little more blur in the background. This is a pretty flat subject, so I don't need a huge depth of field. And uh, my flash power for right now, I just started at 1 1 28th power, and then I'm going to check my histogram and change the flash power accordingly. So let's give this a try. And that is not enough flash power, so I am going to increase my flash. I could see it just with the preview, so I didn't even have to look at the histogram. It was way underexposed, uh, especially for the background. So I've increased it by two stops. I'm up at 1 1 64th power. I'm sorry, 1 1 32nd power. And that's much better. Take a look at the histogram, not too bad. I'm gonna try one more um, quick adjustment. Because of the light fall off, I'm getting more light on this side than I am over, over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add something for bounce to bounce the light back in. I'm gonna grab one of my foam boards and lean it against the subject. So that should help fill in that other side. Oh, that's just about perfect. <laughs> so that right there was enough to really bounce the light in and it fills in this whole area. I could have a little bit more light in the front. And so if I wanted to change the exposure of what the flash is not hitting, I could open up my shutter speed a little bit more, or slow down my shutter speed a little bit more. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm gonna go a stop um, slower in my shutter speed. So I'm at 1 30th of a second. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you're interested in macro subjects, my uh, co-author and I, Bruce Topper, have published a book on macro photography. You can get it on Amazon or at my website, horndesigns.com. Thanks for watching.